Hey everyone, it's Imran from Options Insight. This is your Macro Options Spotlight. What a crazy day. So we had uh, absolutely ginormous moves um, in the markets yesterday. Uh, we got a slightly new look to our cross-asset vol uh, summary. So we split it, we've added a load of assets and we're splitting it into equities and commodities and then the other asset class in the second part. So looking at this table, what do we see? We see a sea of green. Um, so you had S&P having a 5.5% update, NASDAQ 7.5%. I mean, these are absolutely enormous moves. Um, now, what I've done is I've added um, a vol adjusted or a sigma move here, both for the daily and the weekly. So you're used to seeing the weekly sigma moves, but I figured it makes sense to have the dailies as well. So we've actually got four sigma moves in US indices, which is kind of unheard of. And you only really ever get these in bear markets when you get massive short squeezes, right? So on the week, we've got about a two sigma rally in uh, US stocks. But on the day, we had a four sigma rally, right? Because the implied vol is about 21. And for the market to be up like five, six percent on a 21 vol, that's four times your expected daily move. Uh, so historic moves, what were they on the back of? Obviously, it was the CPI coming in lower than expected. Uh, terminals rate, terminal rates getting priced down pretty sharply in the rates market. Uh, commodities also on fire uh, as metals broke out above some key levels. Gold up 3%. Um, gold miners up 7.5%, similar to NASDAQ. And that puts gold miners, the GDX, up 25% on the week, which is a four sigma uh, move on the week, which is similar to what we're seeing in gold. So in, enormous moves in gold there. Uh, we had flagged GDX as a potential hedge to the upside if you thought we were going to get a dovish FOMC last week. So we didn't get that. But given this data point, um, that, that GDX trade could have done quite well for you. Um, other than that, you know, we did also see a weaker dollar, obviously, uh, and China easing COVID restrictions. So whilst we saw FXI up overnight, we have seen Hong Kong up again overnight. Uh, those markets kind of on fire as well. Uh, the surprising laggard, really, oil, um, only up 1%. Uh, bit, it's, it's rallying a bit today. Uh, so a bit of continuation there with the weaker dollar theme. Uh, but really lagging behind some of these metals, which and, and that's probably because people's own energy because it's been a sensible own to have energy, um, whereas metals, people have been a bit more short. So I think short squeezing going on in the metal space there. Uh, if we look at implied volatility, um, obviously lower. Uh, so we're seeing about two to three points lower across equity indices. Uh, VIX obviously down uh, as well. So you can see here. VIX was down about six points. Um, well, vol of vol, sorry, that's the vol of the VIX was down. So VVIX down, VIX itself obviously down as well. That's just S&P vol. Um, but fixed strike vols, which we'll talk about a bit later, didn't actually have a massive move down. And that's just because once the move got so big and went through that kind of two, two three percent and kind of doubled in size, the move, um, people, the vol caught a bit of a bid as dealers were scrambling to cover some gamma because a lot of zero day options we're trading on the upside uh, from these like lottery ticket type bets and, and dealers need to buy some volatility to hedge that. Um, carry obviously eviscerated as realized vol left implied in the dust. Obviously a 7.5% move on NASDAQ in one day is going to do that. Uh, these type of rallies, as I've said, only really tend to happen in bear markets. Um, the best long gammas have been uh, US indices um, in terms of equities anyway. Uh, and obviously um, the likes of GDX and, and GLD, right? So gold has been a good one. The metals in general have just been very good gamma, uh, given how much they squeeze and where their implies were. Now, if we look at SKU, we did see SKU lower again, but pretty understandable given how huge the upside move is. And, you know, the SKU is the differential between downside vol and upside vol. Upside vol definitely winning the day there. Um, oil SKU has bounced as well. So we see USO SKU on the week up about two vols for puts. So that's rallying back. That was going the other way towards calls last week as we were threatening to break out in oil. And then as the oil rally kind of pulled back, the skews flipped back the other way. So quite volatile, the price action in oil skew right now. Um, no clear trend there right now. It's just kind of following whatever spot's doing. Uh, and then nat gas, which we've added to the dashboard, you can see uh, having a move down in skew, which is going more negative, which means going more towards the calls because nat gas actually had a decent bounce in terms of spot. Um, from, from recent kind of lows. All right, so that's it for equities and commodities. Now, if we move to FX, bonds, and we've added some sectors in there as well. Uh, obviously, enormous vol-adjusted moves in FX. We had been saying FX Gamma was a clear own. Uh, it's been realizing, and we thought it was going to move 
uh, on the CPI. Little did we know that it was going to do uh, four sigma moves as well. And I mean, if you look at dollar yen, that's actually a five sigma move on dollar yen, which is the largest drop um, in dollar yen since 1998. So pretty ridiculous move in dollar yen, taking it back to 140. And that is actually gone through 140 overnight. So dramatic moves uh, in FX. So um, we also saw bonds ripping higher. TLTs was up 4%. That's a three sigma move. And HYG, a big move as well. 3% in HYG, which is on a much lower base fall of 13, uh, turned out to be a 3.8 sigma move in HYG. So literally risk assets just ripping like crazy. Um, and, and in terms of the curve, we saw about 30 bips um, yield taking about 30 bips drop uh, across the curve pretty much. Steepness not changing too much. Uh, implied vols um, actually lower despite these enormous moves, multi-sigma moves. Implied vols kind of still lower in FX. And in, in FX, it's not quite as clear that vols should drop when spot goes higher, right? Because the skew's not as steep as it is in equities. It's a bit more symmetrical. Maybe it's a bit of a smile. But we are seeing vols lower, uh, which is basically suggesting the market is expecting some calm to come back now. The move index got slammed. So rates vol also dropping off sharply. And rates vol has been a big driver this year. So people may be taking that as a signal to let all cross-asset vols deflate a bit. Uh, if rates fall is going to come down. But to be fair, when rates are moving 30 bips in a day, I'm not sure how justified it is for rates fall to really collapse that much. Um, in terms of the carry board, not a single bit of green on the board, as you can see uh, in these asset classes. So we've got red everywhere. We're seeing 100% type numbers in GBP. I had flagged GBP as a good gamma to own. Well, it certainly proved to be good. Uh, we had a 5% move on the week, a 3% move on the day. And that thing is carrying probably better than I've ever seen it carry in my career. Um, you've, uh, what else you've got? The fact that implied <clears throat> are offered, though, suggests that markets believe that carry will come back soon enough after this kind of huge shock repricing. Uh, markets don't expect this sort of volatility to persist. And so these reds over the course of the next week may start to flip back towards green if things can stabilize. But because this was such a big move, the history of this move is going to be in the 10 day window for the next couple of weeks. So it's going to keep that realized looking quite inflated, right? Even if markets do settle down. Um, in terms of skew in FX, generally softer, uh, moving more towards the weaker dollar, obviously, in line with spot. Big drop in TLT skew, saw 75 basis point drop in TLT skew. That's very close to neutral now at 0 0.4, uh, as the market's a bit more symmetrical about where bonds are going. Um, and the other interesting thing was I've added these sectors here, and these aren't every single sector, but this is like a cross section of the market that, that I want to keep an eye on. And I've put the ARC ETF in there just to keep an eye on what's going on in those high growth tech names. And whilst the, the actual sector was up 15%, that ETF was yesterday, which is a four sigma move. And we're talking about a four sigma move on a vol that's at 58%. So there's not a low vol underlying, and it still managed to do four sigma uh, in a day. Now, the skew on that, even though we rallied 15%, the skew on that's gone bid for puts. So currently, the skew is 10 vols in favor of puts. And that's actually come up four vols on the week. So as the ARK ETF is rallying pretty hard, um, you are still seeing a bit of a bid for the puts relative to the calls. I thought an interesting data point there. OK, that's the extended summary for today. All right, if we now move on, uh, what do we see? So obviously the rally, the rally in risk markets had pain written all over it, right? So most the most shorted stocks were leading the charge. This was a chart from uh, Jim Bianco um, and Tommy Thornton, I believe, showing you about a ten percent move in this Goldman's most shorted basket. And if we look back at previous moves of this order of magnitude, there's not very many of them, but they tend to happen when you're in the midst of a bear market, right? So you've you've had a sell off, then you get these sharp spikes. All of these are pretty much coming from, um, from a place where the market has, has sold off and it's a reactive bounce in a bear market, right? So whilst if we are starting a new bull market, you can sometimes get these sharp, sharp bounces off the lows at the start of a new bull market, like we got in March 2020, when, when the Fed stepped and we had a step came in and we had a 10% rally in a day. But the truth is, I don't think we're, we're in that sort of scenario. I just think this is a run of the mill. We're still in the bear market and this is the kind of bear market squeeze you typically would get. Um, the reaction in the rates market, taking 20 basis points out of the terminal funds rate is a bit interesting uh, as well. Literally the week after Powell signaled that terminal 
Fed funds may need to go higher, we on one data point are pricing 20 basis points out of that terminal rate. So that's this that's this move up here, basically, in terms of the terminal fund rate now being around 485, 490. Uh, and it was at about 510 before. So a bit punchy in terms of market pricing, but I'd say I suspect it's more positioning led. Um, I do think that, you know, this is an overreaction led by under positioning in equities as well. Uh, short dated option speculation is going through the roof. So, you know, once a move starts to materialize on a data point on any given day, you get all these zero DTE option flows that come in and kind of force that and exaggerate the move. So we saw 100,000 options on the S&P 3950 calls changing hands yesterday, which is about 43% of all the options volume in S&P. And that was for an option miles out of the money expiring the same day. So this is this is the trend we are seeing in these uh, intraday flows in options, right? Um, you know, so so I, I wouldn't read too much into it. I think I think the the last two percent was probably people frantically trying to hedge against these crazy uh, zero DTE options, right? Uh, these type of mega risk rallies do tend to loosen financial conditions as well. That's not what the Fed wants to see. Um, markets are now pricing in an eighty percent probability of a fifty basis point. Um, hike in December instead of 75. We've got non-farm payrolls, PCE and CPI still to come before that December meeting. So there's still lots to play for. We think the market's probably gone a little bit too far into what it's pricing in here um, in terms of dovishness. Um, that's not to say, you know, that, that it can't keep going, but but it just feels like for one data point, it, it's probably a little bit too much and it's probably been exaggerated by positioning more than like, the fundamental reality. And don't be surprised if you start seeing the Fed um, talking back uh, and talking hawkish um, in response to this type of market reaction, as we've pretty much seen all year long. I think Yellen's already uh, come out on the tape saying that. Okay. Um, now, what else are we seeing? Um, we're looking at gold. Obviously, we've mentioned gold had a massive break. Technically, you look at gold, 1735 was the level. Um, that it needed to kind of hold below. Uh, it didn't manage it. It broke above. And now that kind of opens up the way for a test of around that 1800 area. Um, so that's kind of your next hurdle, right? That comes in where the 200 day moving average is 1790 to 1800 area is kind of your next stop if this bull continues and if the dollar stays on the back foot. 108 was the big support level on DXY, which we are below right now. We're at 107. Let's see if we close out the week um, below that level. We probably will. Um, given how much it's overshot through, but and we have got markets that are shut um, in the US for Veterans Day, so the bond market. So I don't know. I'm not sure the dollar is going to manage to put in a reversal and close back above 108 today. So it does look like this could well be a break and the break that we've been talking about. Um, obviously, the crypto disaster that we witnessed this week with FTX and the wiping out of that um, of that player in the crypto market and and all the various um, repercussions that. That that's going to lead to, um, that's probably giving gold a bit of a bid as well, right? Where some some of the money parked in crypto markets is that fiat currency debasement play. Gold is arguably in that camp as well. So maybe if you're pulling your money out of crypto, maybe you're parking some of it back into gold, good old fashioned gold. Um, to see sustained upside, we would want to see um, the flows, the ETF holdings and things like that turn. Uh, we haven't seen that yet, but that data may be a little bit lagging. Um, so let's see over the coming month if we do start to see some real institutional money coming back into gold or if this was just a short squeeze. For now, I think I'm in the short squeeze camp. Uh, fundamentally, um, I'm still a believer that the Fed's going to stay a little bit more hawkish um, and I don't think real yields are going to collapse. So let's see if it plays out that way. Um, I would like to say I want to see confirmation of the Fed being done with rate hikes uh, before getting too carried away by the squeezy price action in gold. Um, and then the last thing to talk about today um, is vol wasn't really down in S&P, right? So I've said the at-the-money vol was lower in S&P, so I'm kind of contradicting myself there. So what do I mean by that? So whilst the one-month vol, the one-month at-the-money vol on S&P was lower, what does the at-the-money vol mean? It means the volatility on the at-the-money strike. And because the market rallied 200 points yesterday on the S&P, that at the money strike went from 37.50 to 39.50 due to the 5% up move. Okay, so when you're comparing at the money vol today with at the money vol yesterday, and the at the money price has moved so much, then you're comparing completely different strikes. Okay, so the way to get a sense of what vol really did is to say, well, where did we finish up on the day? 
We finished up at 39.50. What did the 39.50 strike expiring in December, which is, let's say, our roughly one month expiry, what did that do? So you can see that the implied vol was at around 24 before the CPI. It dropped down to about 22 and a half. And that was when the market went up initially. The, the knee jerk was 37.50, kind of up to around 3,900. So it's a decent 150 point rally. Market kind of thought, yep, yeah, 3,900, we've been there before. That's it, moves done, we're going to stay there. As it started to break 3,900 and go higher, look what Vol did. Vol re re reset all the way back to where it was, close to 24 again. So the Vol on that option, on that December 3950 strike, did try to reset lower initially. But as we continued rallying, it caught a bid because dealers would have been scrambling to buy optionality as that move just kept happening because they were getting lifted out of zero DTE options, which contained a load of gamma. And if you can't buy those options back because you've just literally just sold them, then what are you going to buy? You're going to buy some other options back that have some gamma, which will be like your front month options on the S&P. So that's where that bid came from. And, and that's what took that vol all the way back to unchanged, right? So this is this is the key. You need to understand, and that gives you a sense for what the dealer's positioning was like. Gives you a sense that dealers got caught a little bit uncomfortably short gamma on that rally, which is why they started to then buy that vol back. Basically, now once those zero DTE options expire, obviously a lot of that short gamma goes away, and so the options that these guys bought, they might need to dump them again if no no more call buyers come in today we might see vol collapse back again on the one month, remains to be seen. Um, but I suspect the zero DTE flows are going to calm down a bit now that the data point is out the way, um, the move has happened, and it's and it's Veterans Day in the US. So I, I probably suspect that that one month vol does drift back a little bit uh, as we go throughout the day. All right, that's it for today. No trade ideas today, just because when we get such dramatic moves like that, um, I wasn't really putting any, any new trades on. If anything, I was just kind of... Uh, letting the dust settle. I didn't have the greatest day in my portfolio yesterday. Um, I was leaning a little bit more short, but a lot of my positions are a bit more medium term. Um, like we're looking at Jan, Jan through to March in terms of uh, an even, even uh, June next year for some of the positions like Brazil, which had a horrible day. Um, so yeah, I'm not really putting on any new risk right now. It's let the dust settle. Let's see how the market digests these crazy moves. Uh, and then we could reassess this next week with, with fresh eyes. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great weekend um, and um, I'll, I'll see you all next week. Thanks.